understanding how silence is violence. And silence is violence not so much on a physical level, it's violent on a physiological and emotional level. Um, silence is usually an unconscious action due to lack of emotional growth. We know all people across the board have experienced traumas and all of them can be equally emotionally stunted people that is. Even if some traumas are worse or have been more consistent than others. But this silence can turn up in the form of a partner who stonewalls you or a parent that ignores you. Um, it could even turn up as someone's unwillingness to hear your point of view or to deny your reality, which is more along the lines of gaslighting. Notice how odd it is when maybe you watch a documentary or listen to a podcast on psychopaths or serial killers. And as he healthy enough humans, most of the time, we're blown away that these people can be so straight faced as they witness extreme distress or inflict extreme distress lack of empathy from our community members is a major threat to us. And it's actually on a biological and a physio physiological level, like a body-based level, it's not correct behavior, it's incorrect. The correct behavior is to be able to mirror community members, mirror the people around us as a result of um, when we mirror, we see someone's facial expression, we see their body language, and our body and our, and our faces start to mirror that. And that gives us information about how they are actually feeling. It gives us information about how to respond to each other. If it's a joyful expression that's on their face, we know joy is appropriate. If an angry expression is on their face, we know, um, we know to cope with that differently. Same thing if it's grief, we know to be the person that offers a shoulder to, grow, to cry on or to grieve with them. Even if um, they talk about mirror and match in um, sales seminars and they'll say, um, allow your person that you're trying to sell to to mirror your body language, open up, smile, because it builds rapport, it builds trust. So also think about um, the lack of trust that's communicated um, or experienced if you're if you're silent, totally silent. This silencing, um, ignoring, stonewalling, all of that is worse. It's more painful than physical violence. Um, you are wired from birth to become stressed when you are met with unresponsiveness. So if we think about this as babies, this unresponsiveness might come to us in the form of a caregiver ignoring our cries for food or for comfort, something that's very survival-based for us. So from our earliest experience with unresponsiveness, we know on a nervous system level that this is a reason to panic for a healthy nervous system being met with unresponsiveness is directly connected to starvation and to imminent death on a nervous system level. My best recommendation for you is hear people, listen to people, affirm their feelings, knowing that their experience is correct. It's what they experience, whether or not it's what you experience. Their experience is correct and it's valid. If you need a timeout or a break, that's okay, take it. But don't dismiss the people in, in your community. Don't dismiss the people that are around you. Hear them, listen to them, affirm their feelings. This is how we create healing for ourselves and for one another.